All right, good evening. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak to you today about the coronavirus. And our office understands that individuals have questions and concerns about the current situation. And I want to provide you with information to help ease concerns. All right, so the Middlesex County Office of Health Services is providing residents and partners uh, with information about the novel or new coronavirus, COVID-19. Uh, we will continue to communicate with New Jersey Department of Health and our public health partners in order to effectively respond to any case of illness within our county. All right, so COVID-19 is a novel or new virus that started to cause infections in humans in 2019. And a new virus is a concern since humans do not have immunity and it's hard to predict how the virus will behave in the population. The signs and symptoms of this disease can range from mild to severe. The illness starts with flu-like symptoms, fever and cough. As the disease progresses and it affects the lungs, uh, you could have shortness of breath and difficulty breathing. And the disease has shown uh, to have severe illness in older adults with underlying health conditions and or uh, any, at any age with individuals with underlying health conditions. Uh, with this, uh, there is no vaccine to prevent coronavirus and there's no specific treatment. So people that have mild illness can treat the symptoms with decongestions, cough depressions, and fever reducing medication. And then people with severe illness can be provided supportive treatment in a hospital to provide oxygen fluids and respiratory support. All right, how do we prevent the spread? So it is currently flu and respiratory disease season and influenza-like illness activity level for New Jersey is high. So we can still have uh, influenza uh, within our county. Uh, there are steps that everyone can take to prevent the spread of the COVID-19 and other illnesses like the flu. And it's recommended that everyday precautions can help prevent the spread of respiratory illness, avoiding close contact with people who are sick, avoiding touching your eyes, nose, and mouth, uh, staying home when you are sick, covering your cough or sneeze with the tissue and then throwing the tissue in the trash, cleaning and disinfecting frequently, uh, touch objects and surfaces, uh, wash your hands often with soap and water for 20 seconds, um, if soap and water is not readily available, you could use uh, hand sanitizer with 60% alcohol. And you can also practice other good health habits such as getting plenty of sleep, drinking fluids, eating nutritious food, and managing your stress. And other ways uh, that we can help prevent the flu, I mean, and uh, coronavirus, is also we utilize the terms isolation and quarantine. So the term um, isolation means the individual uh, is, has disease and is sick, and so that person is separated. And then when you hear the word quarantine, that means the person was exposed but doesn't have signs and symptoms yet of the disease. So we want to uh, quarantine that individual or separate that individual for the duration of the incubation period of disease from the time of exposure. So for this particular disease, it is uh, 14 days. And that's why you'll see in this next slide for traveling. So if you're traveling, you'd want to visit the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention Traveler's Health page and view the current travel health notices. So there's three different types of warnings, level one, two, and three. So a level one would be practice usual precautions, level two is practice enhanced precautions, and level three is avo avoid non-essential travel. So for the coronavirus, um, so China, South Korea, Iran, Iran, and Italy are currently level three. Uh, Japan is level two, and Hong Kong is level one. So upon returning, if you have signs and symptoms, or uh, if you're coming from an area that's affected with the disease, you would want to um, self-monitor for 14 days. All right, so what to do if you get sick? So if, you, if you're sick or, sus or suspect you may be sick, there's some steps that you could take to prevent disease from spreading in your home and the community. So you'd want to stay home except to get medical care, and you want to restrict uh, any uh, activities. Uh, separate yourself from other people in, in your home. You want to call ahead before visiting your doctor. 
Um, if you have symptoms, your doctor may want you to wear a mask so that the germs would be caught inside the mask and not spread when you come to the doctor's office. And also, they could prepare for you ahead of time. Again, trying to cover and cough your sneeze, uh, avoid uh, sharing personal household items, clean your hands often, cleaning your surfaces, and monitoring your symptoms. And then seeking prompt medical attention if your illness is getting worse or if you're having trouble breathing. All right, everyone here can uh, prepare for an emergency. We can make a kit, have a plan, and stay informed. Uh, you can get uh, additional information on ready.gov on how to prepare for emergencies. So preparing for emergencies such as uh, COVID-19 or influenza, uh, you could have the following in your emergency kit, you know, two, uh, two weeks supply of food and water. Uh, you can check your prescription medications, make sure you have enough. Um, also have non-prescription medications, cold remedies, cough, cough and cold medicines, uh, any uh, vitamins that you may take, um, fever reducing medicine. Also having copies of and maintaining your health records so you have them to prevent to present to your health care provider. Uh, you can talk with uh, family members and loved ones and uh, how what's your plan and if someone got sick in the family how is your plan to take care of them. Um, if you have pets make sure you have pet supplies. Um, if you have infants, your baby care items, anything that would be uh, for your specific needs for your home. And also talk to your uh, work about their emergency plans. Can you work from home? Uh, and talk to schools if you have uh, children in the school about their plan. Are they going to have uh, the kids come home and they can get their work in school, school work at home? All right. If people have questions or concerns, they could call the 1-800 uh, number. So they have, um, it's a 24-hour public hotline. Uh, 1-800-222-1222. And if you're using an out-of-state phone, the number to call would be 1-800-962-1253. And trained healthcare professionals at the New Jersey Poison Control Center are standing to answer questions about coronavirus. And the call is free. Also, we have the warm line that's open. So if individuals are feeling stressed or overwhelmed, the, they can call the New Jersey Department of Human Services toll-free warm line at 877-294-HELP-4357. And this is activated during events that impact the mental health of New Jersey residents. The line does not replace 911 and it's not used to report emergencies. And there's also a TTY line as well, so that's 877-294-4356. And if you want to stay up to date on uh, the most uh, recent information, this is the state's website and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. So you can go to their websites. If you're looking for a more global, uh, you can go to the World Health Organization to look at what's going on in the world. But this is our state, and this is our uh, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And we have uh, information, resources, uh, flyers, uh, fact sheets on our website as well, and also our social media as well. And I do have uh, some fact sheets that are in the back corner there on some of the uh, flyers and stuff that you saw in the presentation. Okay, thank you. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to come okay. tonight. Thank you very much.